I study uh, hereditary breast and ovarian cancers. Uh, more specifically, I study the role of uh, cancer susceptibility genes, or genes that are involved in developing um, breast and ovarian cancer. Before 1990, uh, we knew that there were genes involved uh, in uh, the hereditary forms of breast and ovarian cancer. And we knew that these genes were uh, inherited in cancer families. Uh, but we didn't know specifically what those genes were. And we were searching for them. Uh, and the importance of searching for these genes is that although they, they uh, occurred in cancer families, not all uh, women in these families inherited these specific genes. Uh, so there was a search uh, that had gone on for many, many years to discover these genes. And two very important genes were identified. They were called BRCA1 and BRCA2. Uh, so in the early uh, to mid-1990s, there was a search for these genes. And then during the mid-1990s, these genes were identified. Identifying these genes uh, allows us to identify the women who carry the mutation in these genes, which put them at increased risk for developing both breast and ovarian cancer. So now we can find the women in these families that are actually at increased risk and separate them from those that are not necessarily at increased risk. So that's, what, that's the point we're at right now. So the Cancer Research Society is very important to the research community because it provides uh, research funding uh, or uh, an operating funding to sustain research uh, in various areas. Uh, it, for, for, for my own research, it's on hereditary breast and ovarian cancers. And uh, the, because the society provides research dollars to projects that are very, very focused uh, that can be completed within um, a well-defined timeline. Um, it is possible to take these, um, uh, this knowledge and translate into the clinic fairly quickly.